Hi folks, thanks for joining me. So I'm Lou Thomas and thank you for coming back to Highest Gear Reviews. So today we've got a pretty cool vehicle, a 2022 Mustang Mach-E. So as we all know, everything's kind of going electric, right? It's just the wave of the future. It's undeniable. That's the way it's going to go. So what we have, like I said, 2022 Mustang Mach-E. Uh, not much is going to change with the 23s, but we'll take a look at those whenever we can get a hold of one. But anyway, so the question that comes to mind is, is this a Mustang? So uh, I know what you're thinking. If you're kind of a Mustang purist, it, it, it just isn't a Mustang, right? And I kind of agree. I mean, I've had a few Mustangs in my life, and uh, I don't believe this is a Mustang. Personally, I'd have probably given it a different name, like another kind of cool Ford name. Uh, I don't know, Falcon or something like that, or uh, some other name other than the Mustang. But it's the wave of the future. That's the way things are going. So we're going to take a look at this 2022 Mustang Mach-E. So let's just dive right into it, okay? So basically what this is, is of course, it's a crossover electric vehicle. Uh, this particular one is the Select model. Uh, it's kind of a basic model, but it has pretty much everything you need in it. It's missing a few of the luxury items, obviously. You can also get a premium model. You can kind of get like a California edition. Uh, you can get a GT model. Then you can get like a GT performance model, which is just a real pavement ripper. I mean, it is a fast vehicle. So anyway, like I said, this particular one is the select model, okay? So as far as the question always comes to mind with an electric vehicle is kind of what's the range like on these? So the Fords aren't quite where the Tesla extended ranges are, but not bad. I mean, this particular one is the low range one. This is a 211 mile range vehicle, uh, depending on how you drive, obviously. Uh, you can also get it upgraded with a bigger battery pack to a 305 mile per, uh, three, sorry, 305 mile range. Uh, you can get them with rear-wheel drive, uh, all-wheel drive. Uh, they kind of have dual-motor setups in them as well, okay? Uh, as far as horsepower, pretty impressive, really. So this particular one, about 266 horsepower, uh, about 317 foot-pounds of torque, but it is a torquey son of a gun. Let me tell you, these cars really take off on the line. Uh, you can run them all the way up to 346 horsepower on the upper models, and that's going to give you about 428 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, as far as the wheels on it go, uh, all different types of wheels are available. This particular one has some 19-inch rims on it. Uh, you can get 20-inch rims on them as well. Um, basically, I mean, it's, it's really a nice vehicle. Like I said, it's not a Mustang, but it is a really nice vehicle. Uh, as far as some other things you can get, uh, they come with adaptive cruise control. Uh, you can get the uh, lane keep assisters on them as well. Uh, cross traffic alerts, all that kind of stuff as well. So very well appointed vehicle. Uh, as far as warranties go on these, so you're going to get about 100,000 mile, eight year warranty on the kind of vehicle electronic systems in the electronic drives. Uh, they're going to get a limited three year, 36,000 mile warranty. And then you're also going to powertrain warranty of about five years, uh, 60,000 miles. Uh, pricing on these, this particular one's going to put you back around $45,000. Uh, you can go up from there. They go up to about $66,000, so it kind of runs the gamut, right? Um, then as far as 0 to 60 times, now like I said, these things are punchy. I mean, they get out of their own way in a hurry. The torque is impressive. It gets right on it. It's instantaneous almost. So 0 to 60, this particular model, like I said, the base model, about 5.1 seconds, which is pretty impressive. Step on the gas. We're in unbridled mode, and bye-bye. That's pretty quick. As far as the upper models, the GT is going to do 0 to 60 in about 3.7 seconds. Uh, top speed on this particular one is going to be about 114 miles per hour. Uh, the GT is going to bump it up just a little bit to about 120 miles per hour. So let's take a closer look at what we have on the Mustang Mach-E. So let's take a look at the styling on our Mustang Mach-E. So I think the headlights do kind of give it kind of a little bit of a Mustang look like the newer Mustang. but. Hey, you know, it's as good as it's going to give with a uh, crossover vehicle. I do like the way they've done the grill, though, on this, or at least the front end, you know, kind of impersonating a grill. I think some of the EVs are just too plain. They're just boring looking in the front, just boring. This one looks pretty cool. It's kind of got this plastic trim going around it. Of course, you've got your uh, Mustang here kind of in the corral, right? Uh, rest of it's pretty aerodynamic, obviously. You're trying to get the maximum efficiency. Uh, of course, LED lights, nicely sculpted hood. Looks really cool. I think it's actually, I mean, it's a decent looking vehicle. Um, you know, it's for what it is, For it's just a good looking vehicle, I believe. Like I said, not a Mustang, but hey, we're getting, getting ahead of ourselves. But anyway, on the side, it uh, looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm not a huge fan on any of the cars is kind of this 
plastic cladding that everyone's going to. I think it's just kind of a cheap way to get that body line as far as not having to, you know, stamp the metal, basically. Uh, wheels, eh, these ones don't do much for me. I mean, they're kind of the aerodynamic looking wheels, so, you know, that's what you're going to get. Of course, your uh, side marker uh, lights here as well. Uh, body line, though, going down the side looks really good. Uh, nice Mustang E4 logo on there. Uh, as far as the sidelines, like I said, it looks really pretty good. Uh, if you get a different color scheme on them, this one's kind of that really dark gray, almost black. But it has kind of a black section up here, which kind of changes the body line on the vehicle. It tricks your eye into thinking it's lower than it is. Uh, another weird feature, which is kind of odd, is uh, no door handles at all. I guess everyone's going away from this. There's just this little winglet here, and you just kind of press this button here, and then the door would open up. Uh, same thing in the rear of the vehicle as well. No door handle, so you just press the button here, which at first, if you don't know where it is, I guess is going to be kind of a little bit of a bummer trying to work out how to get into your car, but you know, you learn it really quickly, obviously. So anyway, it's got the plastic cladding going down it. Uh, pretty decent body lines on the side of the car, so no, oh, pretty nice looking. So as we move to the back of the Mustang, so obviously you can see a design cue here, right? If you're familiar with the Mustang, as far as the three element kind of rear light, uh, very Mustang-y, right? Of course, big Mustang logo there. Uh, pretty nicely shaped, you know, uh, rear of the vehicle. Uh, good size hatch to get in there. Uh, nice big reverse light back there as well. So pretty good design. I mean, uh, looks pretty cool, really. I mean, it's 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 a nice looking crossover. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. As far as getting in the back, uh, most of them will have like the electronic trunk assist or gate assist. This one doesn't. Uh, there's a button under here. You'll just feel under here, press the button. Uh, trunk will open up so yeah not too bad as far as rear design all right so let's take a look at what kind of junk we can fit in the trunk so like i said nicely styled rear it's kind of got this little spoiler here deal uh, rear wiper obviously like i said uh, the upper trim models are going to have like the electronic uh, gate assist this particular one doesn't just press the button though and opens easy enough it's just got the hydraulics standard hydraulics in the back here lots of room right there is a lot of room back here a couple of tie downs here so those are kind of handy so that's kind of neat. Uh, let's see, are there any forward tie downs? No forward tie downs, which is kind of weird. So uh, you have these two tie downs in the rear, but hey, it'd be nice if it had the uh, forward ones. I guess you could hook it into here as far as the child restraint deal. Uh, some other things back here, 12 volt power supply. So that's always nice to have. Uh, when we lift this up here, uh, you've got kind of your charging pack as far as the uh, cord and all that kind of stuff. Uh, no spare tire. So it just has that little kind of compressor with the, uh, you know, gel or whatever in it, basically. Uh, you can't really put anything else under here. It's just a decorative panel, basically. It doesn't add any depth behind here. As far as the seats folding down, real easy. Push the button, they're gonna push forward, and you are gonna get a bunch of room back there. So uh, very versatile. I mean, you can carry a bunch of stuff in this vehicle. So a lot of room back there. All right, so as far as an EV, of course, these are going to have a lot of luggage room, right? So this is going to be the front. So open up, there's a lever inside that you'll pull it twice to open it up. Pops on open, nice hydraulic assist. So here you've got a little bit of a storage area here. You could get a carry-on bag in here, you know, get quite a few groceries in here, actually. Uh, the funny thing about this is there's actually this little drain hole here. So it might be hard to see. I'll take a picture of it, but there's this little drain hole here. And the idea with that is you can actually kind of fill this thing up with ice and kind of use it as like a... Kind of a rolling cooler it's kind of actually a funny design now to make it even more kind of humorous in a way there's a couple of these little cup holders here so you can put like your uh, big gulp as far as a small base or a can of soda or something in here and just use as kind of a holder and then have like a little cooler here so uh, kind of funny actually what they did uh windshield wiper fluids up here as well in the normal position where you'd think it is so um it's kind of cool because like i said you can put your uh, barbecue stuff in here some ice keep it cool it's not going to get warm since there's no engine obviously and uh yeah, it's kind of a little quirky little thing all right so this is one of those things i always think is kind of overlooked in a lot of reviews but i think uh, ease of entry as far as how it is getting in and out of your vehicle right uh as far as sill height, uh, are you going to bunk your head on there or anything like that? So anyway, getting into the vehicle, I guess it's got these little winglets here. So you're just going to push this button here. Door kind of pops open. And let's get on in. Hmm, nice. Okay, so yeah, good entry height. Uh, sill's a little bit high. It's got kind of like a well that dips down into here as well, but uh, nothing too bad. Uh, headroom's good. I've got a lot of headroom here. Standard seating position. 
I'm about six foot four and I'm seating just perfectly nicely in here. So yes, yeah, a nice entry position, uh, feels good. All right, folks, I know a lot of people like to see this, like does the big guy fit in the back of the car? So let's take a look. So like I said, kind of a little push button here, just push it, door kind of pops open, kind of cool, like a little popper device, right? So we're gonna open her up. I'm gonna try and wedge in here. So this is my normal seating position as well as far as my driver position. So we're gonna have like a six foot four, six foot five, whatever uh, driver and a six foot four, six foot five, whatever passenger in the rear. So let's see how it goes. So like I said, a bit of a step up. Coming in, oh. not too bad. So now this line here is very low just because of the shape of the vehicle, right? But there's actually pretty good headroom in here once you're back here. Uh, my legs are, you know, in here. Can't put them here, so I have to kind of put them on the outside, but pretty comfortable, not too bad at all. Let's take a look. Eh, not too bad, actually. You know, I mean, it's, it's a little bit snug for my size, obviously, but uh, eh, not really too bad. So, as far as rear seat room, like I said, I'm kind of a big guy, right? Six foot four, about 270 pounds. So it is a little bit tight for me, don't get me wrong. Normal driving position, uh, this big kind of, it's kind of a big panel on the interior of the door here, which really intrudes into the uh, seating area quite a bit. I kind of wish they would have made that a lot narrower or closer to the door to give me more room because that's pinching my leg against the seat. But uh, the seat's very comfortable. It's a nice, comfortable seat. It does have kind of your center armrest here of a couple of cup holders. Uh, there's only one USB standard, one USB uh, um, a compact setting back here. There's a little bit of a heating or vent controls, just as far as vent controls. Uh, so not too much going on back here. Little uh, section here to keep a couple little knickknacks behind the seat. But uh, as far as headroom goes, not too bad, really. I mean, pretty comfortable. But like I said, a little bit tight. And like I said, I wish this interior panel was just tucked outside of, you know, to the outside of the vehicle more because it really intrudes heavily into the driving or into the uh, seating area back here. But still a comfortable place to be. All right, folks, so here we are on the inside of the Ford uh, Mustang Mach-E. So I got to tell you, this is actually a really nicely done interior. Um, in my opinion, I actually think it's nicer than the Tesla. I think the Tesla is just, I know what they're doing. I know they're going for that look, you know, kind of that modern kind of hyper electric modern type look, but um, it's just real Spartan, you know, it just doesn't really do much for me, but hey, you know, Tesla purists love it and uh, a lot of people do love it. I mean, it's a, like, don't get me wrong, it's a great car, but this one is just kind of, it's what I kind of expect to see in a car anyway. I mean, everything's where it normally would be in a Ford product, basically. I mean, the light switches over here, your uh, stem controls are all the same, the steering wheel controls are all the same. And that's kind of a, it's almost like comforting in a way because it's its its what you're used to, right? As far as if you haven't had a Tesla, I guess, one or the other, like Polestar, all that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing I really do like on it is this little dash up here, the dash indication. Um, I really wish the Tesla would incorporate something a little bit more like this. I just like this. It's it's traditional. I know what's going on. I can see my speed releasing. My eyes are straight ahead. I don't have to take my uh, eyes off the uh, you know forward looking area of the vehicle. Uh, fit and finish is actually pretty darn nice. I mean, it's everything you touch is going to be kind of soft touch. Uh, this one's obviously kind of like the pleathery type stuff, but uh, feels pretty good. Uh, steering wheel feels a little bit spongy, but not bad at all. Of course, it is adjustable. So uh, just drop this down, telescoping, tilt up, all that kind of stuff, which you'd expect. Um, pedal position feels great. Dead pedal feels right where it should be. A uh, huge screen here as well, obviously. I mean, this thing's monstrous here. And I'll uh, kind of show you a little bit on that in just a moment. Uh, does have your dual charging zones here. Has a regular USB, USB-C connector. A uh, couple of cup holders here. Here's your gear selector. It's uh, kind of one of those dial dealios. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, this one does have kind of like your parking assist and all that kind of stuff to help you get in the parking spaces. Uh, you can click this here and this will pop up. A lot of room down here. There's another 12 volt power supply in there and it'll cover to cover it up so you can keep some stuff there if you want. Uh, seats are really comfortable. They're kind of like a plaid, uh, you know, pleated kind of design, kind of a pillow top, and uh, yeah, feel really nice. I could do kind of like this aluminum trim that adds a little bit of accent to her. Uh, just a nicely done interior. So, getting back to this infotainment system, right, or this center control system, there is a bunch of stuff going on here. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. 
probably too much for me to really show you. Uh, this one here is kind of a dial as far as uh, changing your audio as your stereo system, which is kind of nice just to have that traditional dial again. So as you're driving along, you need to use, you know, the uh, controls on the steering wheel or just more traditional. Maybe a passenger just reaches over and adjusts that. Uh, numerous different driving modes. Uh, there's like the whisper mode, the engage mode, a little bit more performance, and then the unbridled mode, which is even more performance. Uh, it does have this kind of cool propulsion sound system, so it simulates kind of engine sounds in the vehicle, and I really like that because um, it kind of needs to be more engaged with the vehicle. I think if you don't have that on, it just gets so kind of monotonous and kind of boring, really, to tell you the truth. In an electric vehicle, there's no feedback from the engine, and that kind of simulates it as far as that uh, propulsion system. Uh, it does have one pedal drive control as well, so basically as you accelerate and take your foot off the accelerator pedal, um, it'll slow down the vehicle. It'll be like a brake assist, basically, so you can drive with one, ha uh, one foot, sorry, uh, just one pedal which is kind of a neat feature. Of course, uh, numerous cameras all around the vehicle as well. So there's gonna be all kinds of stuff, uh, various cameras mounted on it. Uh, pretty crisp display, so not too bad at all. Uh, you do have your driver assistance type stuff as well. Um, I don't know exactly everything that does, but it has a lot of stuff, valet mode, all that kind of stuff. Uh, air conditioning controls are pretty much gonna be down here most of the time, really easy to change out. Just adjust your temperature, auto, manual, whatever you wanna run it as. Uh, different sands, fan speeds obviously comes with, uh, you can get them with electric seats, uh, cool seats, all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, this one kind of shows how you're using your energy system. Like right now, I'm not driving the car, so I'm using 100% just in the climate control pretty much. Uh, radio control, Apple CarPlay, uh, all kinds of other stuff, Android Auto, all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, let's go back over here. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in this vehicle, so uh, just a bunch of stuff. Oh, your stereo controls, you can do your personal preferences, phone lists, all that kind of stuff. Uh, come over here, you've got a nice navigation system. Uh, gives you kind of like a 3D view if you want, or kind of like a standard old kind of flat atlas type look, I guess you could call it. So uh, really easy to use, pretty intuitive as far as what you want to do. Uh, where do you want to go? Just type in wherever you want to go and off you go. You can find your charging stations for you, all that kind of stuff. Just press chargers and it's gonna list all the available chargers that are close to you, and you just pick whichever one you want to go to and zip on over there. So nicely done as far as navigation system. Everything is very easy to use. It's very intuitive. Um, there was a little bit of a lag time I noticed, but very slight, but uh, not bad at all, really. Uh, so like I said, lots of other stuff to do here. It's got a few little games in here, right? I guess these, uh, all the electric cars are kind of throwing these games in. Uh, mostly just for when you're at the char charging station, gives you kind of something to do as far as playing a game or something. So uh, pretty neat. Uh, you got another one like a sketch pad here, so you can kind of do some artwork or whatever you want to do. So you know, kind of pick your color, do whatever you want to do, do some artwork, uh, work on your signature, <laughs> that kind of a stuff. And uh, so anyway, has a lot of different stuff. Has the Alexa built in it as well. Um, obviously your Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff as well. So. Nicely done, good job. Let's take a look at this one here. It just kind of shows your tire pressures all around. So no, they did a good job. Uh, like I said, very easy to use, very intuitive system. So uh, yeah, nicely done. So as far as my driving impressions on the Ford Mustang E, uh, nice. They did a good job. Stern feels good, maybe just a little bit light at speed. Uh, brakes feel good, uh, although when you're slowing down, kind of a slower stop or driving very slowly, they're a little bit grabby. Uh, as far as ride, I mean, it feels great. Very stable. Uh, acceleration is ridiculous. I mean, it's just so much fun to drive this car. It's just a fun, fast car to drive. And uh, overall, just a really good job. As far as the cabins, comfortable. A little bit of noise from it, uh, but very little, really. I mean, just a comfortable place to be. Um, just comfortable seats. Uh, nice driving position. Good visibility. I mean, they really kind of hit everything on the head. Uh, the technology on it is great. I mean, it's on par with any of the other, uh, like, electric vehicles out there. So, all in all, just a good job. Nicely done. Um, I think you're going to enjoy this. All right. So, after a little bit of work, since I wasn't sure how this station works at EVgo, uh, so now I've got it plugged in, and we're going to charge her up. So, we started at 69%, and let's see, that was about 155 so we'll go from 155 and we'll uh, try and get it up to like 90% or so and see how long it takes. All right, so we started at 69% charge, now we're at 94. I think we started at, uh, I can't remember, like 155 or something. 
Uh, so 28 minutes, and it went up, uh, what is that, about 30, uh, almost, well, 25% charge. So about a, about a minute per percent, I guess, of this charging station. That kind of shows you what the kilowatt power that's going into it is, and whatever that all means. So there we are at the charging station. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of the review of the beautiful 2022 uh, Mustang Marquee. Hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, a lot of other vehicles coming up to show you. And uh, like I said, if you're interested in an electronic vehicle, um, this is going to be one that you want to really get, want to really take a close look at. I mean, if you're in the Tesla market or Polestar market, uh, don't overlook this Mustang, okay? It's surprisingly good. So, this kind of leaves me with a dilemma. Uh, like I said, I'm uh, kind of a you know, a purist as far as I really do like the original Mustang. And what do I think of this electronic Mustang? Well, it's, it's impressive for what it is. Like I said, I wish they would have changed the name, but this is a great vehicle. Would I buy one? Uh, absolutely. I would consider this vehicle very strongly if I was in the market for an electronic vehicle. So anyway, like I said, I appreciate your time. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Please have your friends come and join us on the next vehicle. And until then, I guess we're out of here. So stay safe and thank you for joining me again. Bye-bye.